So in this video, we'll go through some early warning signs that your feet give you about your diabetes. By knowing these early signs, you can take better care and prevent more serious complications. And if you're new here, my name is Dr. Khaled. I'm a family doctor from sunny England, so let's dive straight in. So the first sign is if you're getting numbness or tingling in your feet, then this can be a common symptom of diabetes. It is often related to nerves getting damaged in your feet. So uh, you see it in diabetes because you have high sugar levels in your blood, so that's whooshing around all over the place, and over time, this high sugar levels can start to damage the nerves, and your nerves are things that help you sense and feel around your body. And as these nerves get damaged, you may start to feel cold areas or cold sensation in your hands and feet. This damage can disrupt the ability for those nerves to send off messages to your brain. And so your brain gets a whole mishmash of symptoms of tingling, burning, hot and cold, and various other type of symptoms. But what is more worrying is the next stage, is as a nerve gets more and more more damage, it stops altogether sending signals to the brain. So that is often if you get patches of complete numbness, which can mean that the nerve is not transmitting any messages to the brain and it could be permanently damaged. And so if you're getting some of these early signs, then it's worth getting things checked. This is exactly why diabetics have a yearly checkup on their feet and legs to make sure they're not getting any early signs of this damage. And the key one is if you are found to be diabetic, a tight control of your blood sugar levels can often help with these symptoms. And remember these symptoms aren't just limited to your feet, it can be in other extremity areas, so your hands as well. And the damage to the nerve is called neuropathy. And lastly, this is something I always tell my patients in my clinic is that as a diabetic, it's really important to check your feet daily. And that's because you can catch cuts, braises, uh, small ulcers that are forming very early on. As the nerves get damaged, you may not start to feel those things. So that takes us on nicely to number two, which is infected sores or ulcers, which can be a sign of worsening diabetes. And why is that? Well, we talked about the neuropathy just now and that damage to the nerve, so you're not feeling things properly. Um, say you have a small bump or a cut or even a stone in your shoe, um, normally what you would do is you feel it and you take it out. But if your nerves are not working properly, that can press and damage your skin and over time develop into sores and ulcers. And you'd be surprised at how important pain is in our lives and not just in a s and kind of way. Um, think of it in this way, like you're working in a busy kitchen, in a restaurant and you're running around and you have no feelings in your fingers. So whenever you're touching something, even if it's hot, the hob, or uh, you're chopping things up and you're not feeling or sensing this pain, you can have a lot of accidents. And it's the same when your nerve endings are damaged. You can start to have a lot more accidents and kind of look and say, well, I don't remember I did that. And these larger sores and ulcers can develop over time. And because you may not know about them, they're more likely to get infected because you're not giving them right care. But also when you have very high levels of sugar in your blood, your immune system doesn't work as well as it should. So your immune system is not as active. You may not notice the sores as early and the infections could be brewing. So you're more prone to get them. On to number three, and that is cold feet. And I don't mean leaving your partner at the altar. That has nothing to do with diabetes. People who have diabetes can often get cold feet because of a combination of factors. Neuropathy we talked about already, um, but also circulation problems because as you get higher sugar levels, your circulation in your extremities gets worse. So your blood flow through those areas is reduced Blood is warm, so it can cool things down a little bit as well. Number four is a slightly rare complication of diabetes, but still an important one to be aware of and not to miss. Now, some people get a foot deformity called Charcot's foot. This can leave your foot looking a little bit odd shaped, swollen at times, and it can look a different color. And we don't fully know the, the causes of it, but we think it's down to a number of factors. Those little bits of micro trauma and damage, uh, problems with poor circulation, um, and also nerve damage as well. And in the end, this can lead to people getting abnormalities in the bone, which may need surgery or even an amputation. Often seeing a healthcare professional and getting a scan early to diagnose it can improve your chances of treating those complications. Now on to number five, and if you notice a loss of hair or shiny smooth skin on your feet or legs, then it could be a result of very high sugar levels and diabetes. You see, because diabetes damages your blood vessels, 
and causes poor circulation, this can result in disruption of important supply of oxygen and nutrients to the hair follicles. And so with less oxygen and nutrients, it means the natural healthy hair that you might have can start to fall out, leaving behind shiny and smooth skin. Now on to number six, and if you notice that you're getting yellow discolored toenails and it isn't going away, well, it could be as a result of diabetes. You see, we talked about sores and those kind of infections. There are other types of infections that people with diabetes can get, and it's fungal infections, and particularly toenails, so fungal toenail infections. Um, there's lots of reasons for this, but if you are getting recurrent fungal infections, it could be down to high sugar levels and your immune system not working properly. Um, the key thing is to get it diagnosed, so you would go and see your family doctor. They can take toenail clippings, probably wouldn't do it themselves. They'll tell you to go away and give you a pot and take some toenail clippings, send it off to the lab, get the diagnosis and get onto the right track. And onto number seven, which is another different type of fungal infection. So if you're getting dry, cracked skin on your feet, this can sometimes be a fungal infection called athlete's foot, even if you are not an athlete or barely do any exercise. And it is more common in diabetics, especially if your sugar levels are very high or uncontrolled because the funguses that grow on your feet, well, they feed on that sugar and it allows a rich environment for them to continue to multiply. So key measures here to reduce your risk here would be number one is to stay hydrated. So making sure that you uh, are drinking plenty of water and that helps your skin barrier from not becoming too dry and cracking out. Number two is to control your blood sugar levels better. So when we get better control of our blood sugar levels, some of these symptoms start to improve as well. And lastly, try and moisturize your skin um, regularly. Again, that helps to keep it nice and moisturized, stops it from getting cuts drying out and breaks in the skin. And finally, the last one today that we'll cover is painful feet or legs. This usually happens in diabetic neuropathy, the nerve damage that we talked about earlier, but also some circulation problems like claudication, where people get cramping like pain in their calves and lower legs. And often classically what people tell you with claudication is that when they're walking, the pain comes on, but when they sit down and rest, it seems to get a little bit better. And again, that's more of a circulation thing, but it can sometimes be seen in diabetics as well. I always say to my patients, if you are in pain, that's often your body telling you that something's not quite right and it's worth getting that investigated. Now with diabetes itself, we focused on the foot today, but some signs and symptoms of diabetes may be very difficult to pick up and they can go under the radar. In the next video, I'll explain some other body signs that you could look out for. So if you found this video useful, click on the next video and I'll see you on there. Thank you and stay healthy.